All right, continuing on. Uh, water is known as the universal solvent because water is so polar, we could almost call it a super, a superhero of polarity. Okay, so that water, anything that's positive and negative, so like ionic compounds, water can dissolve. Anything that has positive and negative signs. Like polar molecules, water can dissolve. So there are only three types of things ionic, polar covalent, and nonpolar covalent. And water can dissolve two out of those three. So I know that universal means everything, but it's really two out of three things. Also, water, when, it, when they connect with themselves, there's a lot of empty space between the molecules as a solid which is really weird because most things, when they become solid, they pack themselves in real tight, which means so water is, well, the only thing that I can think of that is less dense as a solid than it is as a liquid. For us, that's perfectly natural because ever since we were little, we could see ice floating on water. But everything else in nature the ice goes straight down to the bottom. All right, so Lewis dot diagrams. I've taught you many, I'm gonna end up teaching you many, many uh, difficult things, but this ain't one of them. What are dot diagrams? They are visual representations of atoms showing the outer shell electrons showing the outer shell electrons that they have. So once again, you're gonna to have to learn to count from one to eight, that's the key. Maybe you have a younger brother and sister that can help you learn to count from one to eight. They were developed by an actual American. Up until this point, of course, we've talked about Cuban scientists, people who I make believe were great chemists, right? And we've talked about French scientists and German scientists and English scientists. We've never talked about American scientists. This guy was an American scientist. When I saw a picture of him, I kept thinking, I know this guy. How do I know this guy? I know this guy. And then I realized yes. he's the Lorax. Doesn't he look like the Lorax? He's the inspiration for the Lorax. All right. So how do we write dot diagrams for positive ions? Since the positive ions lose electrons, they will lose all their outer shell electrons. Then we place a bracket and a charge. So since positive ions lose electrons, then all we're going to do is, did we skip one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, write, finish this, writing this down, and we'll come back. We haven't learned how to write dot diagrams, have we? Does it involve dots? Yes. Who would have guessed? Yes. I like that. It was made by a guy named Lewis. Yes! Man, you guys, that's why they're called Lewis dot diagrams. That's right, guys. Little spheres, yes! Man! Okay, so let me show you how to do 20. 
So we begin with hydrogen. Hydrogen, interesting enough, is in the first column, which means it has one dot, one outer shell electron. Do you see the relationship? First column, one dot. One dot. So what we're going to do is we're going to place dots around the symbol where the S's are. And remember, there are three P's, right? So if this symbol was completely full of electrons, it would have two in the S, two in one of the P's, P's, P's. Remember this from middle school? That's right. That's right. So hydrogen has just one, so we're gonna place its one in the S section. In the S section, and we are now done. That's it. That is a dot diagram for hydrogen. Now I know that helium is, looks like it's in the eighth column, but it really is kind of an exception. It really should be in the second column. All it has is two. It's in the eighth column because, does anyone remember? It is a noble gas. What makes it a noble gas? No, it only has two. What makes it a noble gas? Well, it doesn't react with anything. Why? Okay, it only has the first floor, the 1S floor. That's it. There's no 1P, is there? So it completely fills up the first floor, and there aren't any Ps. So because what it has is full, just like the noble gases, then we consider it a noble gas. All right. Let's go back to the left part of the periodic table. The next element is lithium. And lithium is in the first column, so lithium should look just like hydrogen. Helium is in the same com column as beryllium, therefore beryllium should look just like Okay, now things get a little more interesting. Boron is in the third column. Mr. Marino, what about the 10 in between? Okay, you don't count those. Remember I told you that they're like an antenna. They, they retract into the second column. So the D section retracts into the second column. So what I want you to right now just focus is on the S and P part of the periodic table. I wish at that periodic table back there I could just go press a button and that D section would disappear. <coughs> then you can clearly see that it is uh, uh, the third column. So because it is in the third column, how many outer shell electrons will it have? Three. So two in the S and You close your mouth when you sneeze? You know you can't open your eyes and sneeze at the same time? It's a pressure thing. It's a pressure thing. All right. Uh, I don't think we can. Yep, you're free. Okay. So who would like to try carbon? Bobby, go. Carbon. Yeah. Two on the right. Yeah. And two on the top. And you're wrong. Uh, one on the top, one on the bottom, or one on the top and one on the side. What rule did you guys forget? Remember when we were doing the whole the dormitory that as you were filling in the P one section, one. you had to go one at a time before you had no other choice but to double them up? This is why Hun's rule. H U N D. Hans rule is important. Hans rule. H U N D is important. So, Bobby, you want to try again? 
Okay, yeah. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Hans Rule. Who would like to try nitrogen? Freddie. Then Kanan can do the next one. Two on the right, one on top, one on the left, one on the bottom. Kanan, how about oxygen? Two right, two top, one left, one down. Good. How about fluorine? Emma. Very nice. How about neon? Volunteer. New one. New volunteer. Go, Elaine. Okay. Does that make sense for a noble gas? Why does it make sense for a noble gas? Right. There are no spaces available. And eight is great. Eight is great. Now, let's do sodium. We got to come back up here. But sodium is the only one we're going to do from the third floor because hopefully you'll understand why here in a second. What does sodium look like? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Ryan, register. I'll take that finger as a hand. Yeah. Okay, why do I not need to continue? Same pattern. Man, MG will look like BE. AL will look like B. On and so forth. Okay? If you can do eight, the first eight, actually the first ten, then you can do them all. Now, I may ask you to do something from the D section, but when you consider that the D section is inside the second column, how many dots will the D section have? Two. Two. And if I ask you to do one from the F section, considering the F section is inside the D section, which is inside number two, how many will you have? Two. Two. All right, so now let's try some of these positive ions. Sodium, we've already established, has one electron. Sodium has room for how many? Robert, seven more. It wants to have eight. It has eight inside, plus one. It is eight plus one. So what's the easiest thing for them to do? Gain seven or lose one? Lose one. So the way that we symbolize a positive ion is by taking away all the dots. But if you take away all the dots, then people may not know that you're drawing a dot diagram because Na looks the same as the symbol Na. All right, so the way that you communicate to people that we are dealing with an ion is by putting it in brackets. But now I know that this is a this is an ion, but I don't know whether it's a positive ion or a negative ion. I also don't know whether it's a positive one or positive two or positive three or negative one or negative two or negative three ion. I can tell it is a positive because it doesn't have any electrons around it but I don't know whether it's positive one, positive two, or positive three. So what other piece of information do you need, Robert? Very good, what is the charge? Since it loses one. Done. That is the dot diagram for sodium ion. All right, who would like to try magnesium? Nope, somebody new. Thank you, Maddie. Magnesium, look at it on the periodic table, which of course should be out. 
because this is chemistry. Your periodic table and your calculator should be up. All right, so look on the periodic table, Maddie. Find magnesium. See it? Two? Okay, so it can either gain how many or lose two in order to be have the eight. Which one? So when you lose two, those dots disappear. So how do you demonstrate to somebody that you're dealing with an ion? How do you demonstrate to somebody that you are not just dealing with a positive ion, but it is a positive two? How is doing? Yeah. All right, somebody new. Reagan, thank you for volunteering. Aluminum, how many dots do we have? Where are they located? Hey, we're getting closer, but we still need a room here. We need here, 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 here. What would be easiest for it to do? So then it would have none. But how do you communicate that you got rid of those three electrons and it's not just a symbol? But, but how do you communicate that you lost three electrons and not two? So if you lose electrons, if you're a metal, if you're a positive ion, then you will be what I like to call naked, N-E-K-E-D. Naked. You're naked of any electrons. Naked of any electrons. He ain't got nothing on him. No electrons. All right. Since negative ions gain electrons, they will gain enough to get fill to fill up their outer shell. Then we place a bracket and the charge. All right, so how about B, P, I'm sorry. Let's see, Cassidy, thank you for volunteering. How many? Two on the right. Okay, and which column is it in? Well, it's in the third P section, but we also add five, we, we add the S section as well. So that's a total of how many? Look up here, Cassidy. Remember, we disregard the D and the F, so P is right here. So it's one, two, Three, four, five. So how many more dots do you need? Another one on the top. Then you will break Hun's rule. Remember, Hun's rule states one at a time until you have no other choice but to double them up. Okay, so let's look at our options because P's not happy. P wants to be full of electrons. So P's not happy, okay? Um, what are we gonna do? Take away five, that is certainly an option. What's another option?
considering we have room there, there, and there. We have room for three more electrons. So lose five or, and which one would be easier? Yes. So if we gain three electrons, then what will it look like? You see why I put uh, X's and dots? Just so that you could see that some of those electrons belong to phosphorus and some came from somewhere. We don't care where that comes from. All right, so Cassidy, how do we communicate to people that this is not a regular atom, this has been made into an ion? Cassidy? How do we, oh yes, yes, the brackets. Okay, so now I can clearly see that it's an ion, but it could have gained one or two or three electrons. How do I know which one? There it is. Very nice. Good job. Danielle, thank you for volunteering. Sulfur, how many? One step at a time. You're going way ahead. How many outer shell electrons? Okay, can you uh, describe where you want me to put them? Okay, so you're saying it's going to have to do what? So what will it look like once it's gained the two more? and the dots. Can't forget the dots. Do you have to put X's and dots? No. I'm just showing that to you so you can see that these dots are coming from somewhere. We really don't care from where, but there. this is an unnatural situation. Chlorine, thank you, Malachi. Appreciate it, man. Okay. Okay, okay, all right. So what are its choices? Or what would you rather do? What will it look like? Very nice. Very nice indeed. Any questions? All right. What are the rules for drawing dot diagrams for ionic compounds? The positive ions will lose all the electrons. The negative ions will gain, will fill up their electrons. Shells. And number three, put a bracket and a charge. Bracket them and charge them. All right, you ready? Magnesium chloride. Here we go. Now, if I had asked you to write the formula for magnesium chloride, you would do something like this. Magnesium, look it up. 
plus two, chloride minus one. Uh, you're gonna need two of them, MgCl2. And if I had asked you why is that, you would have said, um, I don't know, Mr. Reno, but I know how to do it there, be happy. And if I had said, no, I will only be happy if you can explain to me why that is so, you would have looked at me and said, I don't know. Well, let's figure out why. You ready? Okay. MG. Bobby, you started, you started us out. How about if you start us out with these as well? How many dots for MG? Okay. Chlorine. Yes. 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 Ah, oh, it's so close to being full. Okay. So magnesium meets up with chlorine and they're sitting there and, and magnesium's going, hey, I got these two, which I hate. I wish I could get rid of them. And chlorine's going, you know, I need, I have an opening for one. So the magnesium goes, well, fine, you can have my one. So that chlorine is happy, but magnesium now is going, um, excuse me, I'm, I'm still not quite satisfied. So chlorine remembers that she has an identical twin. She goes, now wait a second. My sister is just like me and she is also needing an electron. Could I bring her over here so you can exchange electrons with her? What do you think magnesium says? Heck yeah. So, and now do you see why it's MgCl2? The dot diagrams explain that. All right, two more. Who would like to try aluminum oxide now that you know how they work? Thank you, Robert. No, no, I know it's AL203. You're going to have to do a dot diagram for it. I thought you were saying you had two electrons. on top okay so how can we solve some problems here aluminum needs to give away and oxygen needs to gain robert so there can be at least some resolution somebody can be happy right so what do we do All right, that completes oxygen, bracket it, and charge it. But aluminum is still not happy. Something's got to have to give. We can't just leave it like this.
about one, one step at a time. Aluminum is not happy, so what does oxygen do? Okay, so transfer that over. And that satisfies aluminum, but this oxygen is still not happy. I have a brother. So bring that over. So now this oxygen is satisfied, but the aluminum has two electrons left. Now, do you see why it's Al203? See, I taught you how just to do it. Don't ask why, just do it. But now we know why it's AEL203. That is the dot diagram. Last one, AC, barium oxide. Give that one to me. So, this one's easy. Remember to put the charges and the dots. Happy wife, happy life. What did I say? Happy wife, happy life. Ain't that right, Marina? That's what I'm saying, man. Happy wife, happy life. If she's not happy, you're not happy. What did I say? I really don't want to do this. Like, the reason why there's a dipole. Alright, I'm going to go to the other day.